I am Dr. Pramod Reddy Kandakure. I am the Chief Cardiothoracic and Aortic Surgeon in Medicore Hospital, High Tech City, Hyderabad. Today, I am going to discuss regarding total arterial revascularization in coronary artery bypass grafting. So, what does it mean? Total arterial revascularization means we use arteries to completely revascularize the heart. So, coronary artery bypass grafting is done using arteries as well as veins as conduits. So what is conduits? Conduits are the piece of artery or vein used to bypass the blocked vessels. So what we do conventionally, most of the centers and most of the surgeons, they use lima. The lima is left internal mammary artery, one artery is behind the left chest that and the veins we, we take from the legs. If you take the veins from the leg, the patency of the veins is roughly around 10 to 12 years. So most 90% of the veins get blocked in 10 to 12 years of time. So whereas the arteries, they remain patent for long time. Various studies have shown that the arterial patency is more compared to the venous crafts. So the studies have shown that the arterial patency 10 to 15 years is almost 90%. So that means 90% of the arteries work for 10 to 15 years. So what conduits we use for a total arterial revascularization? So one is left internal mammary artery from the left side behind the chest, right internal mammary artery from right side of the chest, then radial artery is used plus sometimes we use a gastroepiploic artery and inferior gastric artery but very rarely we use those arteries. So left internal mammary artery and right internal mammary artery are commonly used followed by the radial artery. When we used both arteries, right and left internal mammary artery, sometimes when the like two vessel disease and two or three bypass grafts are only required, we can use both the arteries and we use it as a sequential graft so that no extra uh, incision or no cut is required on the hand. But if like more than two or three grafts are required or bypass uh, anastomosis are required, then we have to take a radial artery. So these three conduits we use most commonly in our uh, setup and uh, we do the surgery. So the conduits which are used can be used as a, a free grafts or you can be can be used as an in situ or we can anastomose it as a T or Y graft. So most commonly depending upon the where the lesion is there, we use like right internal mammary artery, we can connect to the uh, right sided artery or left sided artery or left side artery also we can use it on the left side. Sometimes if the arteries are not reaching then we have to disconnect the artery and then connect it to the Y, make a Y graft, Y or T graft we call it and then do anastomosis. Sometimes we can use as a free uh, arterial pedicle graft and anastomose it to the aorta to give extra blood flow. It all depends upon the what arteries we are grafting and what are the types or what are the caliber of the artery and what is the distal runoff of the artery. If the distal runoff is not good, it's better to uh, do the anastomosis on the aorta so that it gets more blood supply. And if the distal, uh, distal uh, runoff is good, then we can do a T, gra a T graft or Y graft. Also, when multiple grafts are required, on one, one side. So sometimes we do it as a sequential graft or we call a jump graft. So, so one conduit is connected to two or three arteries. So instead of connecting directly to the one, we connect it into the two or three arterial system. So the conduits we can use as a T graft, Y graft, and then we can use it as various combinations like right side artery, lima, uh, lima is used uh, or radial is used and left side artery, lima is used and if, if, if sometimes like diagonal artery is blocked, we can connect it to diagonal as well as LED artery as a sequential graft. So there are the various permutations combinations can be done. Also this surgery can be done in minimally invasive also. So we take a lima artery and then we take a radial and we, we can uh, do use that as a free, free graft or we can uh, use as a direct anastomosis to the aorta or making a Y anastomosis or T anastomosis and doing a bypass graft. So two or three bypass grafts it is required, still it is possible. So when we do this surgery, we do this surgery in a younger patients. So patients who are less than 60 years, doesn't have comorbidities or doesn't have a COPD or a weak bones, those patients we do weak bone in the sense weak sternum because we are taking the both the both the sides mammary artery there are chances of uh, delayed healing of the wound but we have a particular technique that we, we call it so skeletonized we remove only the artery from both sides keeping the uh, veins and the collaterals intact so that the blood supply is maintained plus we take a special precautions to close the chest instead of using wires we use bands 
these uh, arteries which the clinical experience shows that lima and rima they secrete the nitric oxide and no so which causes dilatation of the artery and then prevents atherosclerosis and it prevents uh, early blockage of the arteries so in some studies there are various studies are done there they compared the artery and venous grafts and then arterial grafts are more superior compared to the venous graft so we try to use it arterial grafts more frequently in younger patients if you put a venous graft in a younger patient then the chances of getting blocked and then further reintervention rates is high there are some studies which have shown that the long term results of the arterial grafts are much better or it's equivalent to the stents like drug eluding stents so in younger patients we recommend going for the total arterial bypass grafting which can be done in our center with good results and its long term potency is very good thank you